which is our next meeting in a series of meetings regarding the proposed fiscal year 2018 budget. Mr. Fieldman, good evening. I'll let good you take things off, please. Mayor and Council, just a reminder, this is the proposed budget. As the Mayor said, uh, this is the second of about 10 opportunities to discuss the budget and the property tax levy. A couple of key points about the budget is the annual implementation of many long-range plans and other planning documents that have been discussed throughout multiple years. Therefore, if you've been following along, if most of us in the room have, there are really no surprises in the budget. Most of the policy decisions that drive this budget have been made over the summer as part of long-range planning. Our budget process is particip participative and transparent with 10 meetings total, most of them happening on Tuesday nights with the budget posted on our website. Uh, that actually occurred in late September. It's a very deliberative process. It takes about three months from the time the budget is published uh, until it's actually adopted, including the adoption of the tax levy. Uh, I wanted to remind everybody of the key points found in this year's budget. Number one, uh, the general fund, which is our main operating fund, is a planned use of reserves budget with revenues uh, slightly less than planned expenses to the tune of about $320,000, driven entirely by the state's one-time holdback of 10% of the income tax revenue to municipalities. Because it is a one-time measurable event, we are proposing a one-time measurable response to that loss of revenue. We will maintain our fund balance at the recommended 39% of annual expenses. This budget does include revenue from the uh, recently enacted, yet uh, uh, soon to be effective, food and beverage tax. It's about $1.5 million a year. We expect from that, that tax becomes effective on January 1st. Uh, the uh, property tax levy is uh, flat in all categories, except for the required contribution of public safety pensions, which is going up by $550,000 or so, about a 4.3% increase. Uh, the budget is also reflective of further reductions in staff. Uh, we're now approaching uh, about a 20% reduction in staff over the last decade. This is through attrition. There are no layoffs or separations planned. These are positions that have already become vacant and have not been filled. Those are some of the key items we went over at our first meeting focusing on the general fund and the property tax levy. Tonight you'll hear us talk about uh, the remaining three key points. Uh, you will see in the budget that there is funding to implement the direction the council has provided on facilities planning. Mr. Baker will go over that this evening. There is a contribution to other post-employment benefit unfunded liability to the tune of 300000 You may recall this was a major topic of discussion over the summer as part of long-range planning. And we'll kick off tonight with our discussion of our continued commitment to invest in our infrastructure to keep our infrastructure in top quality condition while maintaining the lowest life cycle cost. With that, it is my proud privilege to introduce our Public Works Director, Nan Newland, to kick off the discussion about infrastructure. Thank you, Dave. Good evening. Good evening again. Once again. Another s We're here to talk about capital, and I'm here to kick off the discussion uh, about the funds that support the village's infrastructure. Uh, this information is found in the Stormwater, Water, and Capital Projects funds, which are located in tab 6 of the budget book and beginning on page 12 of the budget message. Um, here tonight also, uh, we have John Welch, who's our Assistant Director of Public Works for Engineering, and our Stan Balicki, our Assistant Director of Public Works for Operations. Um, John's going to come up and talk about our Capital Projects fund, and Stan will be talking to you about our Water Fund. This is not my favorite. Uh, the proposed 2018 budget includes over $21 million for continued substantial invest investment in the village's infrastructure. 41% of that amount is for improvements to the water fund, which is shown here in the pie chart in blue. This pie chart is on page 13 of the budget message. 28% um, is for the improvement to the street system, which is shown in light blue. And 17% is for stormwater and drainage improvements shown here in green. Um, about 14% is combined um, improvements in the areas of sidewalks, traffic, major buildings, parking, and forestry. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the stormwater fund, and I'm going to be covering that tonight. Um, we're going to kick off with a video to show a little bit of the, the background of our system. The system is extremely large. It consists of 12 miles of creeks, 475 stormwater detention facilities, 
130 miles of storm sewers, 47,000 feet of culverts, 140 miles of ditches, and 7,000 drainage structures. Some portions are modern and function well. Some portions are decades old, are undersized, and don't meet modern regulations. The entire system needs to be maintained for it to continue to function properly. You can learn more about stormwater in the Stormwater Utility Report at www.downers.us. This is one of the many videos that was produced for the Stormwater Utility that's found on the Village website. This gives people a background on, on our system. And the information, the budget, can be found on pages 4-20 through 4-22. Um, next, uh, this is an overview of the projected revenues and expenses in 2018. We have revenues of approximately four point four million dollars that include four point two million dollars uh, from stormwater utility fees and about um, two hundred thousand dollars from grants and developer contributions uh, there's a planned eight and a half percent revenue increase in um, for in the stormwater utility in 2018 to fund maintenance and capital projects um, we'll continue to work on capital projects that reduce flooding and drainage throughout the village and we'll talk about a little bit more about that tonight uh, there will be a spending down of fund balance with expenditures about 2.1 million dollars uh, more in 2018 than the projected revenues and a bond issuance is planned for 2019 to continue the construction of stormwater projects the six and a half million dollars of planned expenses include 1.9 million dollars for operations and maintenance 1.1 million dollars for debt service and 3.5 million dollars for capital improvements and those capital improvements include um, the largest one being um, SW080 in um, the capital improvement plan which is will be projects that were recommended in the 2014 stormwater project analysis for things like land acquisition design and construction um, that will include, um, it also includes replacing the failing storm sewers and a variety of other projects throughout the village. This shows the locations of the six projects that are planned to be built in 2018 for a total cost of about $2.4 million that were recommended in the stormwater um, project analysis um, in 2018. And in 2017, um, you'll recall we recently uh, awarded some projects in the last month or two um, we will be completing five major projects from that analysis for a total of about 1.9 million dollars in 2017 for a combined total of 11 projects um, in 2017 and 2018 that concludes the overview for the stormwater fund and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have thanks Dan questions on the stormwater fund Questions from the audience in the Stormwater Fund. We've got eight more meetings, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to turn over to John Welsh as our assistant Thank director you. for engineering. He'll talk about our capital improvement capital projects fund. Thank you, Nan. Good evening. Good evening. As Nan mentioned, my name is John Welsh. I'll give you a brief overview of activities funded within the capital projects fund. Um, to form the next slide is a short video that summarizes the village's street rehabilitation program which is a very large portion of the capital projects fund do you know that it's cheaper to maintain streets than it is to reconstruct them complete reconstruction is expensive and can cost up to two million dollars per mile while resurfacing costs about four hundred and twenty five thousand dollars per mile downers grove owns 167 miles of streets which are routinely evaluated and maintained. With proper maintenance, the street can last for 100 years or more. Routine resurfacing is performed every 15 to 20 years. Here, the asphalt is ground down, keeping the road base intact, and new asphalt is applied. Other maintenance activities include pavement sealing, crack sealing, pothole filling, and asphalt patching, all done to prevent the need for costly reconstruction. Managing village streets is a high priority, 
and our goal is to maintain drivable conditions at the most cost-effective level. You can learn more about street maintenance at Downers.us. So, village objectives for the cap for the management of our capital infrastructure program are to use a, a systematic approach. We coordinate the timing of projects and uh, try and group projects to achieve an economy of scale. An overview of the capital projects fund. Um, in fiscal year 18, we are anticipating 8.26 million in revenues uh, with just over $9 million in expenses. Revenues come from home, sit, home rules, home rule sales tax, the property tax, and telecom taxes. Just under nine hundred thousand is expected for road resurfacing grants and a twenty-five thousand dollar grant for bicycle and pedestrian improvements. The proposed budget includes a three hundred thousand dollar contribution to uh, from the capital projects fund to the newly created OPEB trust fund, and the seven hundred fifty thousand dollar difference represents the spending down of the fund balance. As Manager mentioned early. Street projects planned for 2018. Um, as I mentioned before, the, the roadway maintenance program is the majority of that fund, um, which includes, like the video said, grinding and overlay, crack sealing, pavement sealing, um, and that that is the largest portion of the four and a half million dollars. There's an additional $1.3 million in MFT, uh, motor fuel tax, uh, for a total expenditure of about $5.8 million on streets next year. The other capital projects shown at the bottom at about $1.7 million are identified on this slide. Um, sidewalks are the large portion of that $1.7 million um, with a total of about $824,000 which includes the first of a two-year program uh, to install sidewalks within the West Burlington area, um, area west of Belmont, north of the tracks, uh, up to Ogden. We also have funding for Emerald Ash Border treatment, traffic signal upgrades, and bicycle and pedestrian improvements. The village spent over $370,000 for sidewalk maintenance and improvements this year. Um, and shown here are some newly constructed um, improvements at Maple and Carpenter and a typical example of the Safe Step firm that comes in and does some uh, grinding where we get some vertical discrepancies that I'm sure you've seen throughout town and there are some right out here outside of Village Hall. Based on that, I will open it up to any questions from Council. Thank you. Questions? Bob? Yeah, question um, Less about the presentation, just more about the uh, book on the table on 429. So the 19 and 20 number is just sort of placeholder darts that anticipate some facility efforts. Is that what's going on? They look dramatically different than any other time. Are you talking about uh, village facilities? Capital projects on 429, years 19 and 20, which of course are obviously estimates. They look to be sort of placeholders anticipating some sort of efforts at facilities. Start to run for the negative. And they anticipate so you're, big you're grants. talking about the out years on capital projects. Like right? big, big grants shown that don't look historically normal and yeah. deficit runs and things like that. We usually adjust those when we get to the current year. So that reads a little bit more like a wish list. And then each year when it becomes current, we have to true up to <coughs> our funding that's available. Or not when you look at four million in capital assets and three point six million in grants and twenty, those aren't just dark placeholders for the same efforts. They're just kind of random numbers. No, no. We're, I, I want to make sure I understand. You say the word facility. Are you talking about village facility, this police? Facility. Mr. Baker will get in that in a second when we get a different point. All right. So it is not in this. Okay. All right. Sorry for the confusion. There. I needed clarification. Thank you. Other questions on this segment? Questions from the audience? The uh, OPEB trust, why did it come out of this fund as opposed to anywhere else? Is it just because there was more money in this fund? And yes. 
<laughs> and so it has nothing to do with employees. Correct. So you may remember in the summer during long range planning, we identified this as an issue that needs to be addressed going forward that the provision of required health benefits to retirees was creating an unfunded liability. And rating agencies and GASB, the Government Accounting Standards Board, is requiring all municipalities to account for this in the same or similar manner that we account for pension obligations. Uh, we are putting together a strategy and a plan that will take us uh, to sustainability over the long term. That plan will be presented later in 2018 uh, for implementation in 2019 and beyond. However, it was important to get a start on making contributions to the OPEB unfunded liability, especially before we uh, undertake any debt issuances planned for 2019. So what we did was very opportunistic. We knew that it was part of our plan to make a contribution in 28, and we simply looked for the fund that could actually afford that contribution. So it is a combination of a long-term, well-thought-out strategy and an opportunistic approach to this year's funding. So I think you asked, why is it from this fund? Is that the one that has the money? Yes, that's, that's the answer to that question. Thank you. Other questions? We'll turn it over okay. to Mr. Thank you, uh, Thank you Mayor. Thank, Thank you, Council. We'll talk Thank about the Mayor. water fund. Good evening, Stan. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Nice to see everybody. Um, as was mentioned, I will be providing an overview of the uh, water fund this evening for 2018. Uh, the water fund is an enterprise fund, and the revenue for that fund is generated from uh, fees that our water customers uh, pay. The objectives, and we have three of those objectives for the water fund, include uh, providing safe and reliable drinking water, operating and maintaining the system in the most uh, cost-effective manner, and third, achieving stable and sufficient water rates. The next few slides will give just a little bit of a background over kind of the major components of the water system. We have seven elevated storage tanks. Those tanks have a storage capacity of approximately 8 million gallons of water. We have six rate control stations throughout the system. Those are the locations where we take in Lake Michigan water that is provided by the DuPage Water Commission. We have approximately 2,800 fire, hy fire hydrants uh, throughout the village that obviously provide fire protection for us. 233 miles of water distribution main, which is the, the water main that runs through the, the right of way delivering that water throughout the community. Um, we have approximately 2,800 mainline valves that allow us to uh, perform maintenance or repairs on the system and isolate sections of the system to do that. And then we also have our, uh, our SCADA system. It's a supervisory control and data acquisition system. It's what we use on a daily basis to uh, monitor and uh, control the water system from the uh, public works facility. The next slide is a summary of the revenues and expenses for the water fund for FY 2018. As you can see, revenues are expected to be uh, approximately $21.2 million and expenses are at approximately $22.5 million uh, for next year. Um, the two, there are two components to the water rate, as you can see on this slide. One of them is the purchase of water from the DuPage Water Commission. And the second is the cost of maintaining the water system infrastructure. Now there's no planned rate increase for the cost of maintaining the village's water infrastructure. Uh, I think we've been able to do a good job of controlling costs. A portion of this cost control, has, an example of it, has been through the use of our uh, IEPA revolving loan program that we've been using for the capital projects. Uh, a small rate increase to cover the cost of purchasing water uh, may occur. This is really dependent upon what the City of Chicago or the DuPage Water Commission may do relative to the cost of water that we have to purchase.
Now to just break down the expenses a, a bit further, of those um, $22.45 million in expenses, <coughs> the largest single expense category that we have is the cost of water itself at $8.74 million. That's about 39% of the total expense budget. Uh, operations and maintenance is at $3.97 million. Debt service uh, is at $1.11 million. And capital expenses are expected to be $8.63 million, which, as you can see, the second largest category. That's just behind uh, the cost of water itself. That's about 38% of the total expense budget for 2018. With respect to the capital expenses for 2018, just a little bit more detail. Uh, you can see that overall, we've got that $8.6 million in capital expenses. The major expense category for that is water main replacement. Um, there's a project there on uh, 55th Street, as well as the overall annual element for water main replacement. Those two uh, projects together total about $7.68 million, which is about 89% of the overall capital budget for 2018. And we also continue with our uh, components and capital for um, well rehabilitation, continuation of storage tank and facility maintenance uh, programs for next year. And that concludes the overview of the water fund budget. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Dan. And can you elaborate a little bit more on the um, the water main replacement? Because um, those are a couple numbers, as you pointed out, that in FY 2018, um, it's four times what we've done in the last, well, certainly last uh, this year, and then double with the year before. Uh, and then we anticipate we're going to have another um, big ticket item for water main replacement, probably tank painting, I'm guessing, in, in, in projected for 2019. And that is, but that that eight million bucks or so is being driven primarily by the Fifth uh, Street project. That's that's a fairly significant project. Um, that is intended to be coordinated with some other work that is that the work the county is doing. Correct. Yep. Okay. So so that is a uh, one of the drivers of that uh, getting that done at the same time. Okay. Which makes sense. Got it. That's a somewhat related, partially related question. Um, on the annual element of water main replacement, are we spending enough, e enough each year, or if we maintain the current rate, we can fully replace the system as it wears out? In other words, are we accruing a, a replacement deficit? Is that question making any sense? Mm -hmm. Or are we spending enough each year so that after 100 years, we will have replaced enough that we really haven't lost ground? Yeah, I, I, I understand, and I've talked about this a long, as long and along with Judy and Nan. I think it predates your time on the council in 2010. Uh, we did a comprehensive water rate study, which was labeled water rate study, but it really was um, a sustainability study in the water system, and it was exactly that. Looking at the overall condition, how much should we replace each year uh, to maintain a sustainability and thinking of life cycle costing and expected life of each pipe um, at that time we started ramping up because we were falling a little bit behind before that and this is part of a multi-year plan to do exactly what you said Commissioner White which is spend the money on a regular basis looking at an annual replacement cycle um, all indications are we're about six seven years into that plan that we yes we think this is the right amount and if we keep doing this kind of investment we will be on that life cycle replacement. So our grandchildren won't have a staggeringly huge bill when everything fails at once. That's correct. That's the goal to not, not let that happen. And in that era of 2010 to 2012 is when we went through all of our major systems and put ourselves on sustainability plans and we planned a little bit of catch up in three or four of the major systems and now we're trying to and have achieved um, really a sustainable annual cost to replace them. And that's also why in the stormwater fund there's $500,000 a year for storm main replacement. That's exactly right. So we streets and in, in stormwater and water, the three major systems, these are similar stories because we did the same types of study in the same era. And so we're on multi-year plans. And to your point, this amount of investment, which is significant, is the number required to make sure that it's sustainable for generations to come. It keeps us even, basically. Yes. Okay. For budgetary purposes, what, how do you define an annual element 
I mean, you broke out annual elements six point nine million, but then you separately broke out the fifty fifth street one for seven hundred and fifty. So how do you define it? You know, what makes it fall into a separate category or an annual element? Generally speaking. Oh, I think I can answer. <laughs> um, the reason 55th Street was called out on its own is because we entered into an intergovernmental agreement with the county to pay for that project. We knew it was coming up as part of that project. Um, a lot of times with the annual element, we're not 100% sure which segments we're going to do each year. We budget a certain amount of money. We have a list of projects, and we're also at the same time fine-tuning which streets we're going to be resurfacing. Um, like John said in his presentation, we look for economy of scale, we look to bundle projects together. So we call it an annual element because we have a target amount of money to spend. We kind of know which areas to address, and then we're, but we haven't really made a final decision on which exact segments it's going to be or which street segments yet until all the pieces are coming together. And you kind of look at the, uh, the engineering portion of it, combining projects. How, how much work we can get right. done. Getting money from other sources. Cost estimating to see how many things, how many segments we can do. And if you said we're decrease that dollar value, then we're obviously just going to decrease in, in our in our number of water main replacements this year. So. Not 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 tonight, but um, for the number of water main replacements that go into that 6.9 number that are not the, the, the 700,000 or so that goes into the 55th Street project just to get an idea of what's anticipated or there's going to be only because it's a big jump from last year uh, and what water mains and what parts of town if if we know. I, I know we know because that's where the number <laughs> came from but you, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, we'll give you the initial indications. The name right. is mentioned. We have a general idea. We'll get you that same general idea. Right. I, mean, I get because I, I, I understand the 55th Street one because that's done in conjunction with uh, the significant work that the county is doing on 55th Street. Um, but the other six point almost seven million dollars that we're doing in FY 2018. We'll this the, the, yeah breakdown. But I don't need it tonight. Thank you, yes, sir. Thank you. And the uh, the well rehab is that just uh, you know trying to keep it in backup. Uh, condition or okay. I, I, I can speak to that I that uh, is intended to uh, fund design uh, work on some improvements to the three remaining backup wells that we have um, in, in preparation for some work to come in future years so we are we aren't really using those wells they're they're just for what emergency purposes right they are they are for okay. correct we don't we don't use those except in a emergency we have not activated those since we've been on uh lake michigan water early 1990s so and, and the other part of that that right. stan's talking about is we are required under our operating agreements with the water commission to have work for backup wells and so that's an ongoing policy discussion and decision at the new page water commission level but until there's any changes made we are obligated to have I think three was the number we have three remaining yes so do we have to test those so wells we do hmm. great Bob and, uh, two questions uh, just following up uh, I think what Martin was getting at with uh, that number I did some you know even if it's kind of wag numbers what a three or four or five year curve might look like uh, cause those two years together, 18 projected and 19 estimated, probably better choice words. You know, there are six, eight years worth of work, at least numerically. So I'd be interested in understanding more about what the five year plan looks like for that. Uh, and then the other thing, just as a, you know, to entertain Bob's curiosity, if we could get uh, those sales in gallons. Or some other oh, yeah, sure. unit measurement. Um, you know, not on Lake. I, I'm hoping, suspecting, and hoping the actual units are going down. Yes, uh, they are. And not on Lake. Other utilities that are taxed. Uh, we have to be a little bit sensitive to uh, you know, projecting revenues based on units that we attend, and everybody's best efforts are decreasing. You may recall we put together that uh, multi-year plan that we did plan for, I think, about a 1% per year decline, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And I think we were seeing that. I don't want to speak. But yes. I, it's been a consistent decline. <coughs> it's arguably a good thing, but something I 
I'm still interested in seeing it. And the maintenance costs yeah. go up, so the per unit. Right. That's the well, issue. Well, in here you got a 2% increase in cost estimated. I just had some <coughs> so obviously you have less units, but what that trend looks like over time and, and how we might project it out. I'd sure. I'd like to see that. Sounds like there's some interest in just dusting out that plan, which still holds true. So we'll get that information out to the council. Is it possible just to approximately say the, the life cycle, the um, the life cycle, the life expectancy of a given segment of water main? Is it 50 years, 75 years? We have that in the report. I don't remember off the top of my head. The average is included in the report. Um, we've seen some variability. Um, ground conditions affect the life of the acidity and the. Uh, transmission of uh, electric current through mm -hmm. pipes because of soil conditions of, can shorten a pipe length. We've seen that in some neighborhoods. Um, we also, there are certain, we're finding kind of through literature, there are certain eras of pipe manufacturing that the quality wasn't as good. So some of the pipes, I think it was like in the 50s and 60s, is that right? Mm -hmm. One yes. of their findings, because of the quality of the cast iron, it, they're not getting the life out of it. So there's I'm saying there's some averages assumed, but there's some variabilities we've even seen in our own system in some neighborhoods where we've it's mostly seen by the number of water main breaks we get, and then when we dig it up, the condition that we're finding the water main in when we dig it up. If you're interested in looking at this, I think it's the 2015 long range plan update that has a nice little summary of that multi year plan. It's got the map of how old all the pipes are, what the expected life is, et cetera. So we'll, we'll take okay. that out and get you a link. Thank you. Questions from the audience on the water fund? The life cycle of water, man. <laughs> Stand fine for stuff fast. <laughs> what is fast? <laughs> Coming soon to Natural Geographic. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thank Stan. Thank you. Water, man. Thanks, Stan. I think we'll do a little bit of uh, roadie adjustment here to get the next presentation going, right? Yep. Should actually be quick. So no as Commissioner uh, Barnett was uh, asking about, and as we had previewed on our key points, uh, one of the key elements of the proposed oh, okay. FY18 budget is continued funding to implement facilities direction that was provided by council over the summer as part of the then priority action item facilities uh, sustainability plan. So Mr. Baker, who was the project manager on that project, will now show us how the FY18 budget relates to that direction. Why? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dave. Um, we did want to remind Council the uh, direction that was provided as a result of the um, efforts that we went through earlier this year on facility planning, uh, but they're represented by the three bullets up at the, uh, the top of the whiteboard there. Um, first being in 2019, we would reevaluate options for replacement of the police station and um, village hall. In the meantime, we will maintain current the buildings at the uh, lowest possible cost and continue saving money uh, to be used for building improvements in 2019 and beyond. So I really just wanted to show you how the budget as prepared uh, supports that direction. So uh, we have really two areas where funds are being accumulated for future facility um, project work. The asset forfeiture fund, which is for page 4-4, 40 of the budget document. Um, by the time 2019 rolls around, we expect there'll be approximately $2 million available in that fund. We did confirm with the Department of Justice that money uh, is not in jeopardy uh, and doesn't have to be used within a specific time frame so long as it is committed to uh, facility improvements as, as we've intended. Uh, and then the other fund uh, is the Major Buildings Fund where we're accumulating the um, revenue from the gasoline tax that was previously used for Fairview Avenue uh, improvements, approximately 200000 per year. So we're showing that revenue in fiscal year 2017, 2018, and 19. So by the time uh, we're into 2019, we expect that we'll have approximately $600,000 of revenue from that uh, source available. So $2.6 million in total. The only project that appears uh, in 2018 is uh, Village Hall roof replacement. 
And again, this is a budgeted uh, figure before that project uh, comes forward to council for approval. We'll make sure it is absolutely in line with the goal of um, m maintaining the, the building at the lowest possible cost. Be happy to answer any questions. I'll take a stab at answering Commissioner Barnett's question he asked just a few minutes ago. On page 4-32 of your budget book is the major buildings fund. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you'll see on the left-hand side there a handful of projects totaling uh, $511,000. That's for all village facilities. That's what's planned for this year's uh, budget. Uh, these numbers, there's also some numbers uh, looking out for uh, facility maintenance items. Those are cost estimates that we've obtained through uh, research and discussion um, that we're just following up with a plan that we talked about over the summer. So uh, the numbers that we show uh, in the next year are not wags or you know, targets or guesses, they're pretty well-informed cost estimates. Uh, as far as future facilities costs, that is yet to be determined in 2019 based on uh, council policy direction. Go for it, Bob. Uh, two things. First is um, we maintain existing buildings at the lowest possible cost. Do we have any ability or have we considered any ability to, probably only in this building is where this relates to, but, but actually sort of purposefully abandoning portions of it, I mean, physically detaching utility, utilities, I'm really talking about heat you know, and light, heat power, but um, to further reduce the cost of operating this property. We started to have those discussions a couple of years ago. <coughs> the initial finding was that a lot of the uh, the way the utilities and support structures in here wasn't real easy to sort of, sort of shut, shut down parts of the building, as you may be familiar with that. So we haven't looked at that probably in, gosh, probably two or three years was the last time we looked at that, but we certainly can do so. Well, and I, we don't have any solutions currently on the table, but I think we do have a consensus that there'll be something dramatic at some point. So every nickel we cannot spend operating this thing between now and whatever that point is, is is valuable do we have any flexibility and choice of words but in the in the gas tax rate as we're trying to accumulate the coal seems to be here to try to accumulate revenue you know, the local gasoline tax that right. was previously used for the fairview avenue debt service i think we do have some that? what's that is there another name for that tax no <laughs> good answer, Dave. Do we have any questions? Real good answer, Dave. That's not the one you're insinuating. It's not that portion. That's why I want to make sure that was a different transportation related tax, which we don't have anymore. It was still fun. Yeah. Okay. But do we have any flexibility in the rate on that at all? I believe we do have some control over that. Mike, do you remember the answer? Yeah, I believe this represents one, one and a half cents per gallon. Um, you know, there was another penny per gallon that came that uh, came off. Yeah, that sunset a few years back. I think that was tied to the uh, yeah the the transportation system and the right. growth commuter shuttle. Right, mm -hmm. eliminating the uh, deficit of the transportation fund. Yep. So yeah, we have some flexibility yeah, yeah, to reinstate those things. I'd like us to all think about that. I mean, that, that's a not that anybody ever likes any taxes, but it's a tax that is to some degree you know discretionary in terms of pays it, it draws from outside of our community, and if the point here is to try and build or build funds to be used at some point, I'd like us to think about that. we got to change the name, then. <laughs> <laughs> I think we know what we would call it. <laughs> 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 we can do that on a Tuesday night. It's like naming rights for a stadium. <laughs> yeah, <there you go. laughs> You're welcome to it. Is it down there? No, no we do the opposite. We threaten to name it after you yeah, until right. you pay up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, as far as facilities, I, I mentioned last week that I am, I am open to uh, finding ways to increase that, that pot of money that we're going to need because, you know, we're, we're, we're certainly not socking away enough money to, to help the situation. I mean, you know, there's going to be a lot more money needed. So, you know, whether it's a gas tax, small property tax increase, uh, because when we were considering the options that we had, there were going to be property tax increases over a long period of time to uh, pay off a debt service. So I certainly would, would consider uh, helping fund that uh, facilities a little more. 
we're going to have to pay sooner or later, and we might as well start now. And there's not a lot of people jumping in, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> not a fun thing to talk about. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. The Billy Bob Yes Lane dance. I, I, yeah. I, I, pre I appreciate that. I appreciate the sentiment of wanting to, uh, to put the money aside, but I can't even think that there's ways to, uh, to leverage existing assets without raising taxes to achieve the goal. You don't want our cats puppies? No. Oh. Or rainbows. <laughs> How about unicorns? Um, thanks, Mary. Oh, sure. Because uh, unicorn will exit. <laughs> All right. Well, at least we settled on that. Um, yeah, I, I also struggle with the idea of raising a tax now for a, a building that we will hypothetically build at some point. We've been talking about the facilities solution in this community for the better part of the last decade, maybe more. Um, this council alone has done it twice. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. If we're going to ask our community to step up and help fund a solution to our facilities challenges, then we darn well better have a solution to our facilities challenges. Um, I don't think you just start socking money away for, on a hypothetical. Uh, and this council, frankly, has failed to do anything other than come up with a hypothetical. And that's on us. Uh, along those lines, I've got no interest in paying for a uh, roof replacement. We know these buildings need to go. I'm sorry. And this you know, our employees, whether they're in the police department or here at Village Hall, deserve a better place to work. Um, and we're spending money on maintaining buildings that we know ought to go. And that is the definition of fiscal irresponsibility. And shame on us for doing it. Well, Thank you. I think it'd be irresponsible to move forward with facilities before the future downtown project is finished. Entitled to your opinion. Yeah. All I know is that uh, if you were in Village Hall uh, Chambers earlier tonight, you would have heard the drip, 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 drip of the rain leaking through the road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sit, sit over there for a while and you'll hear it. It was uh, quite obvious tonight. No, I don't know. It's a, some, I, something's got to be done, otherwise, you're going to have the lights over there go out and have an electrical hand. I don't you know what I'd like to have done there. Spend as little as, as little as possible until we get a permanent solution. I don't think it's irresponsible to sock money away for what you know you're going to need. Uh, families know that they need to sock money away for a uh, if they want to buy a house. Uh, we have a replacement fund for trucks and police cars and other things that we need. It's just a bigger ticket item, uh, and you know we know we're going to do it. We're going to have to do it. Even if it takes another 10 or 20 years, which it certainly shouldn't, but by that time, uh, the burden on the, uh, on, the, on the public will be much less if we put some money away. We should have been doing this for the last 10, 15, 20 years anyway. You know, so, so you can argue, I mean, you, you can argue you know, that it's irresponsible to put money away. Okay. Well, let's be clear, that's not what I said. Okay, what I said was that it's irresponsible to be spending money maintaining a building that we know we ought to knock down. I, okay. I don't have a problem with socking money away if we know we've got a solution that we're socking it toward. When you talk about equipment replacement, we know what it is we're buying. If we're, if we're decommissioning a fire engine, then we're buying a replacement fire engine. And we know what we're, generally what we're going after. Uh, we know generally what it'll cost in another two years, three years, five years. And we've got a, a pretty, I think, uh, obvious and uh, long-term commitment to making those purchases. We've done it in the past and we'll continue to do it in the future. On facilities, this council has done nothing but fall on its face. And that's our political ad for today. <laughs> well, the, the, uh, you call it what you want. Yeah, well, it's a failure of this council. I, I agree with you, Greg. I just suggest that you know, what we're funding is uh, Funding is an easier decision down the road because there's, it's partially funded. I mean, the fact of the matter is that it's not going to cost any less. The fact of the matter is there are vehicles that we've all well know exist to leverage existing assets to do this. Um, we've been unable to do it for a host of reasons. There's probably at least four reasons, depending on who you talk to. But building that fund starts to work against 
some of the things that have been expressed as concerns about rent. It just starts to mitigate risk by building cash. It's, I'm not disagreeing with your premise. No, I, I, I take your point, but it's a drop in the bucket, and we know costs are only going to go up. It, it, will this even cover the increase in cost based on the delay? But no. Okay. It'll make, it'll make future decision makers feel better when they talk about a buy of cash from. I mean, the, real, the reality is, and I don't think it's a concept of putting money away for a rainy day, no pun intended, drip, 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 it goes all. <laughs> but um, the, the, the reason why money has been socked away all these years is very simple, and, and there are multiple members of this room who have served, I mean, at least two of us in this room have served on council in the past, and we didn't put any money back, back mm -hmm. away back then either. Uh, because the idea was that revenue streams were to be used to pay debt service to leverage building the project. We weren't going to save uh, up, up $20 million to build something. Uh, we were going to borrow funds using debt service to build something and then use that same revenue stream that would have been the socking away to pay the debt service. The other alternative, which has always been more attractive to me, is leveraging those existing assets and then using whatever revenue stream you're talking about to, to also pay the debt service um, or, or any, uh, any delta that might exist, uh, keeping it as small as possible. So that the reality is that whether you apply it to a uh, piggy bank or you apply it to a debt service or you apply it to covering a delta for project costs and for leveraging existing assets, they're all different ways of getting to the same place. I just have my preferences, that's all. Yeah, Mayor, I don't want to, I'm not disagreeing at all, and, and I'd further state, you know, so that everybody's thinking it through, uh, from a purely financial model, socking away the money is probably the least effective return. Because cost of money is so expensive. Well, right, you're not leveraging it. You're not leveraging it at all, and, and you're just putting it under, under a pillow. But, but we don't, we haven't, we don't make a lot of decisions in sort of the vacuum of any one category, whether it's finance or technical nature in the finance situation. Oftentimes, there's a technical answer that may still not be the one we choose, at least in its entirety, because there's other elements that weigh in. So my thoughts on that, and we talk about that gas tax, are just trying to find some way to touch on a little bit some of the reluctancy that this group and the right. one prior has had. That's all. It's not the most efficient use of money, and I totally agree with that. So I don't have to say anything now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Questions or comments from the audience? This extra money that you were just talking about, where's that? Because aren't we deficit? We're going into our reserves for this year, so where's this extra money that we were just talking about coming from? The asset forfeiture fund is money that's generated. No, I mean to put away for the rainy day or for facilities down the future when we're deficit spending. So is there really any money to put away anywhere else? It, it would be new money. Uh, yeah, you're talking about creating new money by, and I understood it, all at Bob Street result, increasing an existing revenue stream by raising it. Your, your point is well taken. You're not wrong. <laughs> we're, we're talking about semantics. I would, I would well, just no, I, well, no, I think what he's saying is we're accumulating $200,000 into this fund when we're also taking yes, 320 right. out of the general fund Correct. to pay other expenses. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. So are you really putting money away? I mean, we talked about no. this pre wire so. Yeah, so we have, have, many, books. You have many, many checkbooks, and you know, you have all this, this little checkbook and that little checkbook. And this so you're saying it's an account here? Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> any other, any other questions, observations? Yeah, we're all in rounding error territory. <laughs> yeah, and the broadest and the only reason it's laser not, sharp would propose this is we feel that we're sustainable in the general fund. We wouldn't propose the use of reserve if we didn't feel like the revenues in the next year and the next year were well, sustainable. Yeah, that's right. that's been our track and, record. And stay on tuned, that. that might not even happen. Yeah. So, uh, this is the second uh, of a series of meetings. Uh, we've introduced uh, almost all of the revenues and expenses in the budget. At next week's meeting, we'll have the opportunity to talk about some of the smaller funds. Uh, and uh, how we're making debt service payments and those types of things. So we will be prepared to answer any questions the council has on those issues. That'll get us through October, and then we plan to allow November for further community discussion, council discussion, and start to uh, make our way towards consensus on what this budget will actually look like. And I do want to remind folks that we have a Saturday coffee with the council, which is the third Saturday in October, 9 o'clock, 
fire station two that is a resident driven discussion of the council what any of the attendees would like to talk about is what we will respond to so it's definitely focused on whatever residents want to talk about that's all we had for tonight Mayor. uh one just one more last week i brought up the idea of the doggy hotel tax which could be worth about a hundred thousand dollars that was either well it was met with blank. <laughs> so <laughs> it'd be nice to get some feedback on whether it's a uh, good idea bad idea or who would support it or not. Is, is your concern commissioner that that dog won't hunt i'm no, just no, trying, no, just trying to make our man's best friend, friend that's all well, the spell's on our best projects. That might be a wag. <laughs> it's definitely time for journal. Uh, motion to check. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you and good night. Change, Abby. Just.